Hi, this is Jamie with Stonemeyer Games, and I'm here today to talk about my favorite game mechanism in Concordia. Concordia is a, uh, I guess it's kind of an empire building game. Um, you're kind of starting all in a central point, I think, in Rome, and then you players spread out from there across the Mediterranean. Um, and you're kind of, I mean, there's some, uh, I guess there is some trading in the Medi in Mediterranean aspects to it. Um, but you're kind of building settlements around the board and uh, accumulating resources and eventually scoring points for those resources. Before I get into my favorite mechanism of this game, I wanted to mention something, kind of a, a pet peeve that I have about um, some, some games. Um, and, and it kind of branches off into two segments. There, there are games that have, uh, it's about how games um, tell players how to take their actions. Um, or like what actions they can have and the flow of how those actions are taken. One of those pet peeves are games that come with like a little card that tells you that lists like all the actions you can take. Um, I kind of put up with this in some games that I really love anyway, like Forbidden Desert. Forbidden Desert is a cooperative game that has like a list of actions you can take. Um, and the reason I don't like this is that it really feels like a game thing rather than some connection between um, the the game experience and the real world or whatever the the world is that you're trying to escape to when you're playing the game like it just doesn't in, in real life you never look at a list of actions that you can take before doing something it's a lot more intuitive than that and I think with there are a lot of really creative ways to to tell players their their action their options for actions other than a list. And I'll get to that in a second because Concordia does this really well. The other thing that I really just don't like in games, and this is like an instant turnoff. If you ever want to propose a game to Stonemaier Games, do not send us a game that has this. Don't send us games that have phases within each round or within each turn. So if there's, in a Civ game, I guess, if you have a phase where you produce resources and then a phase where you attack and then a phase where you uh, build buildings, and everyone's kind of doing their phases one by one. You're going around. Don't send that to me um, because, I, again, there, there's just there's no connection at all there between. It, it feels like a game mechanism again because in real life, while there are natural things like seasons that determine when you produce resources, um, or, or uh, I, I guess there are better times to fight battles than others. In the end, it comes down to your own decision. And so what you're doing is you're taking an interesting decision about when they do those things, and you're taking it away from them, and you're putting it in a weird little game mechanism that only makes sense in the context of the game. I'd much prefer for there to be a more natural flow to the game where players can decide when they want to produce. And maybe the game tells them that you can produce more optimally at different times, and you get to choose, okay, is it should I choose this more optimal time to produce, or do I produce later because that's better for me to do this other thing now or attacking or building or any of that stuff. Just don't give me a list of phases that I have to go through to do all those things. So let's talk about what, I, that's a kind of a negative way to start this video, but I did that to set up uh, Concordia because Concordia has a brilliant action mechanism. Um, and what it, it, so in Concordia, I'll explain what the mechanism is. You get this card, this hand of cards, everyone gets the same, uh, what are there, seven cards at the beginning of the game. Um, and you can obtain more during the game. And these are your actions. And these tell you exactly what you need to do to the point that the rulebook in Concordia for kind of a complex game is really slim. It's it's like four pages. It might even be one page front and back because everything is on these cards. Um, like one of the things I can do is play my architect card. And if I do this, I get to move my colonist and then build in cities adjacent to my colonists. And that's, that's that card. And what, what I do is when I play that card, I I decide when I want to play it. There isn't a phase in the game that tells me when I can play my architect card. I play it whenever I want, and then I remove it from my hand, and I'm then left with these other options. Because my architect is busy doing this thing. He's, he's uh, moving my colonists around, so I can't use them again right away. I can only use these other op options. And kind of the most brilliant part of this mechanism, I think, is that there isn't... Um, like, I guess unlike, unlike other deck building games, because it's kind of a deck building game, 
The game doesn't tell me to discard my hand at the end of the round or anything like that, or in the end of my turn. There is a card in my hand that says, uh, when I'm ready, when I, when I really need these cards that I've already used, I can play this card, and then I get to take all the cards I've played back into my hand to use again. And it has a particularly brilliant thing on it because it says depending on like the number of cards that you take back into your hand, you get money based on that amount. You get more money the more cards you've played. So it's this really interesting balance between um, maybe playing the cards that you really, really need and then quickly taking them back into your hand to play again or playing out as many cards as possible in your hand so that you can maximize the Tribune card when you take those cards back into your hand. This, I mean, so what we're looking at, this is a list of actions right here. Um, but it's in my, it's so much more elegantly done than a little checklist of actions that I could take. And all you do on your turn is play one card, and then your turn is done, and it moves to the next player. There's not even any rounds in this game. I don't really like rounds all that much, but I, some games that I love have rounds, so I've kind of learned to appreciate what they, they bring to the game. But there aren't any phases that are telling me that I have to play these cards at a certain time. I just play a card when I'm ready to play it, it's out of my hand, and then the next player takes their turn. And the game keeps on going like that until the game ends. There's an end game trigger. Um, it's brilliant. I mean, it's, it's a brilliant mechanism. And if you're watching this as a game designer, um, I really hope you think of an interesting mechanism like this that makes sense thematically and it gives players interesting choices mechanically that goes well above and beyond an action checklist or putting phases in the game to make players kind of to like shoehorn players into the game that you want them to play instead of letting them play the game with a lot of more interesting choices in the order that they want to play it. It's, it's, it's just really, really brilliant. I recommend you, recommend you play Concordia to see how much better this is than what it could have been if they had just given you a checklist of actions. So that's Concordia, a game I really admire, a very clever action system of these cards in hand. Um, that's my favorite game mechanism of this week. Thanks.